So I've built a lot of audio gear in the past, but this will be my first time building tube microphones. I found these kits through Tab Funkinwork. I bought two C12As and two U47s. When you buy the premium kit, they come with a power supply and a NOS tube, and that seemed like a good choice for these builds. There is an assembly guide, which has some really nice detailed pictures and text on the order that you should build the microphone and some helpful hints along the way. What I found most helpful was probably the layout diagram and the included schematic diagram. So when you first get the microphone, everything's sort of sealed inside the housing just for shipping. So we take the housing out and we can see the two main boards are already screwed together. The first board includes the transformer, which is the special T14 transformer. It's already been glued to the, the mounting board with some E6000 glue, and the primary and secondary leads are sort of sandwiched between the two boards. The backside board there, that's where all the components will go, and that's what we're going to populate first. So here I'm just disassembling those boards so we can get access to soldering the transformers. And when dealing with, with microphone circuits especially, um, the impedances are so high that typically all of your lead traces, whether it's coming from the capsule or going to the transformer, the primary, and even the secondary, it's just generally a good idea to try and keep things as short as possible. Every little piece of wire is going to act like an antenna essentially, so to cut down on noise it's a good idea to make this as clean as possible. And since I did get two of these C12 microphones, I'm just doing everything in parallel, so I'm working on both of the transformer boards for both mics. And there you can see on the bottom left the schematic diagram, and then in the middle there, there's actually a layout diagram for how the boards get populated. So those two documents I found to be a bit more helpful than the assembly guide. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm populating that second board and essentially I just like to dry fit everything, make sure it's all good and the spacing's good before I solder anything. When I'm uh, soldering components, I try to jump from one component to another. That way I don't heat anything up too quickly. The tip of that soldering iron is around 750 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's really easy to melt things pretty quickly. One of the more challenging things about this build is that there's a lot of ground wires that need to kind of run around and zigzag through different areas, so shielding those with some heat shrink is what I tried to do here, and everything stayed fairly neat until the very final step where I needed to wire everything up. And then everything just kind of got a little out of hand, and I think that contributed to the overall noise of the microphone. So you'll see a little bit later what I did to uh, combat some of that noise. So those two boards are finished, and they look relatively neat. But now we're going to hook up all the additional wires to the tube socket and to the connectors. So the connectors on both of these microphones, the C12 and the U47, they're seven pin connectors where ground is in the center and then you have your power supply pins and your audio pins. In the assembly guide, they recommend sort of starting from the bottom of the microphone and building your way up towards the capsule. So even though I populated the, the component boards first, we're now kind of starting from the bottom working on those connectors. 
The reason they tell you to do this is because those wires, those longer wires, will have to be routed through the channel of the housing on the sides, and that almost acts like another shield to protect those wires, keep them from getting too close to the tube. So with those all soldered in at the bottom there, it's then time to route those up through the chassis. So next we're going to work on these tube sockets. They are ceramic and they're sort of suspended in a, a floating rubber grommet and that's to make sure it just cuts down on noise and any, any sort of uh, pinging noise from the chassis. The type of circuit that I'm using for this C12 actually only uses one triode of the tube so we actually don't need to hook up both sets of heaters which kind of relaxes the current draw from the power supply. So we finished the connectors at the bottom of the microphones and we've got the sockets done and the component boards so all that's left to do is really connect all the wires up and then get the capsule mounted. Everything looks fairly neat at this stage without the wiring complete, but you'll see in a second once you add in all these other wires it tends to get a little squirrely. It did come with two power supplies that were already completed, and I really like the finish of these power supplies. It's like the hammer tone paint. So here's the initial testing to see if the heaters would come on for the tubes. And when you buy these kits, the premium kit from Tab Funkenwork, they give you NOS NOS tubes that are really great. That's probably the largest contributor to the tone is the, the type of tube that you select for this microphone. So you can see when it's wired up, it's a little bit more messy on that board, but we do have power to the tube. So after this quick test, we're ready to finish with the capsule. I wanted to try and paint the housing of the microphone a similar hammer tone finish to the power supplies. I tend to prefer that rougher texture instead of the, the shiny clone look that they come with. So here I am just sanding the housing, getting it ready for primer. And then we spray on some just gray primer. And then once that dries, I spray on some of the gray hammer tone paint. This is the first time I've used hammer tone spray paint. It worked pretty well. There's probably a different technique to get it to flake up a bit more and have bigger particle sizes, but the finish was pretty close to what was on the power supply. So even though I got the finish that I was looking for with the hammer tone paint, this ended up not working out as well as it should have because the paint actually covered up some of the screw holes at the base of the chassis that should have been used to make ground connections. I actually didn't catch this until way later but when I finished these two microphones, they were incredibly noisy and it was really difficult to get any usable audio out of them. So I ended up paying a visit to my friend David Brown. He's a really well-known LA microphone repair guy. 
and he was super kind, invited me over to his house, and he showed me lots of different tips on how to assemble and clean and repair microphones, especially tube microphones. And what I ended up doing is just making my own PCB to try and clean up the ground plane. And then I also etched away some of the hammer tone paint that was covering up the ground connection. And I think those two things, adding a PCB with a ground plane and just cleaning up some of the messy wiring on my original build, that's what really brought these microphones to life. So in this next clip, I'm basically disassembling the original wiring that comes with the kit and installing my custom built PCBs into this. The PCBs are only two layers, so they're fairly cheap, but there is a ground plane and all the high value resistors are surface mount design and those come assembled from the factory which is just a little bit cleaner than using my oily hands and rosin filled solder to get those on the board so anything that helps cut down on that noise floor there's nothing inherently wrong with the way the kit comes I think I just sort of rushed into it a little too quickly and I could have made it a bit cleaner at the end of the build But now that I've got the PCBs, it's time to just clean things up and see how good I could get these microphones. The transformer board stays the same as that comes in the kit. It's already glued in with some E6000. So I just push the secondary and primary wires through and get those soldered onto the PCB. One thing I didn't account for on the PCB is that some of those film capacitors are actually too tall near the edge so that when you tried to slide the um, enclosure around the microphone, it ends up hitting those components. So I did take those out and sort of bend those towards the middle of the microphone so that everything would fit together. Another great thing about the PCB is that all the connections to the socket are really close to the socket so I can keep those lead terminals really short. There was one more mistake I made on the PCB in that some of the connections on the back, those pads were actually exposed that could have shorted to the chassis. So here I'm just covering those up with some E6000 and then a little piece of capped on tape. In talking with David Brown, it was interesting because he mentioned how a lot of classic Neumann microphones actually use tape around the capsule to keep moisture out. And here are some pictures of the completed builds. I didn't have any footage of doing the U47s, but those I actually just did the entire kit. I didn't really feel like making a whole nother PCB. The kit is more than sufficient. And then here's actually a test of the noise floor. So that yellow trace is the interface with no microphone. And then the green trace is with the microphone. And you can see that even with some small room noise, we're still 100 dB down, which is excellent for noise floor.
Thanks for watching this video and stick around for the next one. I'll try and get a comparison between C12 and U47s on the drum kit.